All right. Good morning, everybody. How are we doing today? I apologize. We've had a little bit of a technical difficulty this morning. For some reason, Keynote is refusing to open. It crashed my computer, and now it doesn't want to open again. So um, no fun intro video today. So sorry about that, everybody. Um, so real quick, how's everybody doing today? I hope everybody's OK and all that kind of stuff. Um, this morning, we put out the new schedule for the next two weeks of Ocean Stories. We've got like another 12 stories coming or 14 stories. Um, lots of really cool stuff. Um, we've also got a Spanish story this afternoon with Christina, our story in Spanish. And then also another one on Friday with Karen. Um, so lots of cool stuff coming. I'm going to open up the poll right now. Let me launch that. And then... Perfect, cool. So let me introduce Christina to you. Uh, she's one of the founding members of Coral Hero, um, really cool project out of uh, uh, the Yucatan area, out of like Quintana Roo. Um, she's gonna be talking to us today. How are you doing, Christina? I'm fine, a little bit nervous, but ready to tell this <laughs> wonderful story. Awesome, well, we can't wait to hear it. So I'll hand it over to you if you'd like to share your screen and we can uh, start to move. Okay, perfect, thank you, Jay. I hope it sees okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can see it, right? Perfect, we can see everything. Awesome, well, off Perfect. to you. I'm very happy to be with you this today to present you the Conservation Designers uh, Coral Reef Adventure in the Mexican Caribbean. Uh, this is a really inspirational project for me and especially how it's born because it became a great, a great adventure and the special thing here is how we discover how the community became the key element for conservation. So we start right now. Let me just a bit, takes a little, just wait a few seconds, take to start. Mm -hmm. Just wait a minute because it takes a little bit because Zoom and the presentation, but it will fly. presentation is taking a little bit more, but I'll tell you a little bit until the presentation start working. Uh, it starts a project with a slide. Uh, we have problems here in Quintana Roo because of the development and the conservation. So this is, was um, our first problem because I'm not an expert. I'm not a biologist. Uh, I wasn't like working coral field. But I was seeing like something was going wrong here. So I want to, I want to uh, wait just a little bit. Try to mm -hmm. just a minute. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can see work from here. Okay, I think now it's working perfectly. Okay, well, I was telling you about the development and the conservation that I was not an expert in this field, but I arrived in Quintana Roo, uh, especially in Playa in Cosmo two years ago, and I was noticing that something was happened. I started my ocean conservation world in my master's degree. Then uh, I study how people, people's action affect the ecosystem. So I was wondering what was uh, people doing around here? What was happening? Because we wasn't have a, a plan, but we want to start, uh, start knowing conservation and know what was happening in the area. So we noticed the first problems. You maybe heard about pollution, wastewater. The problem in sargassum in the area was really bad the past, past years. The cruise ships, massive tourism, the plastic, overfishing. 
in this image, we can see I was uh, snorkeling around and I saw just like a big clown of sargasso. And this was the difference when it's, it was present with all this like reddish color and what is not with a healthy environment. So I didn't tell you before this, but I'm an industrial designer. And for me, it was a difficult path, like transforming this industrial design in conservation, especially ocean conservation. And that's how I want to merge, to mix creativity with the passion of the ocean and to create this Coral Hero project and call ourselves like a conservation designers. Uh, as you see, this is a multifactorial problem. There's a lot of things going on here. So we would need it, uh, different people with different expertise, like giving some ideas, uh, environment conservation, coral reef experts, some engineering projects, uh, how can we do it? And an important thing, uh, thing, how can we fund the projects? So in Coral here, we start with three lines of action. The first one, education, uh, environmental education. The second one, it was in collaboration. And the third one in social, environment, uh, social environmental management. So we will explain a little bit at the beginning. So the, ver the, the first thing was to understand the context. What was going on here? In Quintana Roo, it's not only the reef in Mexico, it belongs to a Mesoamerican reef. It's a thousand kilometer reef and it's a stretch across four countries, Mexico, Belize, Guatemala, and Honduras. So it's a big reef. And it's spots and it's important because here are more than 60 types of corals, more than 500 fish species. And it's really important to provide the health of the ecosystem because the, the ecosystem services that provides to humans, it's for more than 2 million people around here. So that supports local businesses and another really important activities. And how about specifically in Mexico? So the Mesoamerican Reef, it's kind of a third of all the Mesoamerican Reef with 350 kilometers. We can see how it starts here in the north in Isla Contoy and finishes down in Escalac. So what's important of this image? With the Healthy Reef, uh, Healthy Reef Data 2020, we can see that more of the 50% of the coral situation of Reef Healthy Index are critical or poor. So that's really important message for us, but that's not it because this data was taken in 2018. What happened till then? I don't know if you many know this, but in Florida in 2014 starts a coral disease, a really aggressive coral disease that it's called stony coral tissue loss disease. I know it's a little bit complicated name, but it's a, like a white syndrome, like lepers, like just the tissue just fell off of the skin. We can see this in corals. And this is really, really reminding for us because in 40 days, we can lose a whole colony. So what was happening here, conservation action, what was going on around um, the ONGs, the different projects. And that's what we discover, that it was some messages, but not clear messages. And the most important thing that it wasn't getting to the right people. Maybe the tourism didn't know what was going on or people, people outside the coastal areas. And most important things that we realized here that it was too many no's. Don't do this, don't do that. But if I'm a worried human being, what can I do? What action can I implement here to help a little bit to, uh, to have a, the healthy of the reef? So this is how we start our first line of action, environmental education. I want to show you our first campaign. So be a coral hero. It's a little simple, really. So how toxic is your sunscreen? The exercise is just to took your sunscreen and you have to see the ingredients. The ones in the red zone are the toxic ones and the green zone, the not so toxic. But with these, we want to give a little break to the ocean because too many tourists, too many sunblock and another affectation. So, we know that we don't have to use sunscreen, but what can we do? And our lemma here was not all heroes wear capes. Some heroes wear rashards. So with this simple action, we can do a lot. And it was a really nice campaign because many people start joining. And I want to, to present the main team here. 
Here is Carlos, he's a doctor. I tell you the different disciplines. Uh, she's Mina, she's a, a, a social psychologist. And I was really happy with this campaign because even my mom over here want to become a coral hero. So it was really nice to more people want to send this message. And with these design uh, efforts, we try to do another campaigns because we know we can stop cruise ships or some big actions, but we can do something good for our environment. Like where people put the cigarette butts, it's one good thing to do, or kicking coral because maintaining a good position was snorkeling can help a lot to not kicking or not affecting corals around. So all these design, uh, design efforts give us the opportunity to make a little bit collaboration. So this is the second line of action of Coral Hero. Here we participate with Healthy Reefs in Waters Day in the Planetarium in Cancun. We try to do something for kids for they to know how a healthy reef looks like and a not healthy reef looks like and to share to some uh, not only adults to involve so many people and another uh, nice approach was with the Tec de Monterrey is a university here in Mexico uh, as my profession industrial designer I want to to invite these professionalists to to do something for coral conservation because I know there's a lot of thing to do so this workshop was really, really nice, really enriching because we have we had the opportunity to to design some structures for coral reef restoration. So this was only the first step. We want to continue with this. And when unfortunately white syndrome was advancing really, really fast. Uh, so the question that you were wondering is what else can we do? We know a little bit of it of the disease, maybe of the coral problem. So what else can we do to help the corals heat in Cozumel? So we join efforts uh, with some divers and some coral lovers. We start asking some questions and fortunately with the Commission, the, uh, Commission National Area to Protect Areas, sorry, the CONAM here in, in Cozumel, help us and start giving some some advices and some opportunities so regular people like us can do extraordinary things the best thing the first thing that we learned was coral identification some of the diseases to know what was going on and monitoring to be the eyes in the ocean to help to get, recollect more data and to have more things so this leads to form a bigger group a really nice group corales vivos it's a really, really nice effort, and I feel really happy today to, to speak up for all my friends here because it's an incredible group, and Corales Vivos want to, to keep going on. Last year, every Monday was my favorite day because it was diving day with these people, and we learned to, to collect data, to do some, some things that I'll tell you a little bit later. But it's really nice how uh, community, well, not community, but citizen science can really work out this and to help the experts as we was noticing. And we have the opportunity to professionalize a little bit with the help of Barca Lab, with the University of the UNAM. Um, we start learning more and more sophisticated way to take data. This is a bar drop technique and this is all the team. So thank you to the National Park in Cozumel and to Corales Vivos. We develop a really nice way to, to gather. And from this, our dives never be the same. Why, at least for me, uh, this is my personal favorite color, my coral. And because once you enter the coral world, I see, I think your dives never, never be the same. It's like they turn the lights up in the reef. Like we can see just here. Maybe we see some plants, some rocks, we don't know, but as long as we advance in knowing and enjoy it, maybe we have some groups, some branching corals or pilk, okay, there's something going on right there. And then if you're really lucky, they're putting names and last name to the corals. So the diving experience, it really, really transform it. But okay, this was happening and I was 
wondering what happened with the community here? All people have access to this information or the community, local people know about this, what was going on. So this leads to the third action in Coral Kiro, social environmental management. So what was the relationship between the ecosystem conservation and the community? I didn't know much about who, who was doing it the first time here in the Riviera Maya or the Mexican Caribbean and found out with the connection of these diseases with the local community was one step that we need to explore. And by the way, this is Don Jose. He was one of my greatest inspirations for this part of the project, but I will talk about him later. So what about the locals? That was a big question for us. Uh, this is a picture I found. It's, I think, like early 70s. I didn't design it or anything. It was just like this. We can see how different the management or the ecosystem, the fishermen, just take the turtle, the lobster, some species here that are protected. It was like an advertisement right here. So I think at some point in our history, we believe that the resources provided by the sea were infinite, but now we know they don't. So what happened here? Uh, this, uh, this was the start of a, of a community project because all the work we've been doing till now lead us to Cayo Alcatraz. Cayo Alcatraz is a little island in the north of Cancun that it's uh, a bit with the community of Mar de las Antillas. It's a really, really great place. And this bridge is the first thing you need to, you need to be here then to go to the island. But also this bridge was a real inspiration for me because with this, this little island uh, began my inspiration to begin my PhD degree in sustainable development to know more about the communities, to base the sustainable development in the communities and start knowing to change the way we manage the coastal resources. So a little bit of Cayo uh, Mar de las Antillas. We notice about the diversity, the first thing that all the ecosystem in the coastal area are connected. As you can see here in the mangroves, these trees are really important, are really connected with the coral reefs because not only protect us from waves, from environmental disasters or something, but they are nurseries, nurseries for little species and then we need to go to the reef. Here we, we learn about the value of other species, not only on, uh, underwater species, but these uh, beautiful species like birds can develop new activities like alternative tourism, like bird watching. And we wanted to learn about their lifestyle, where their customs, their traditions, how they're managing their resources, because this is the people who went here before us, that it will be here after. So it's really important to, to talk and to learn about them. We can see here in the experience, we can see Don Jose again. He, in his, we don't know how many years he had, he don't want to, to tell us, but he want a sustainable island. He want to manage better his resources and he's all willing to start doing. So why don't we us start? How can we work together? This was an important question. And thank you for the CONAMP in the Mexican Caribbean in some uh, reserve, a biosphere reserve, Caribe Mexicano. It provides us the facilities to do some workshops, some field work training with this group, this amazing group and some experts in their fields as ecosystem management, coral reefs in community management. We, can, uh, we had the opportunity to visit and work a little bit in, in the field with them. And what really, uh, what really we uh, discovering here was, okay, the ecosystem is damaged, we know that. What else? It was, okay, the money, it's an important thing. We have, or they have, or everybody needs to provide its own and its families. But a really important thing here we discovered was like this little here, this all the work that they just drew. It was, uh, we missing our families. So we start learning that 
sometimes fishermen and local people start feeling like left out of the conservation programs or the same society because how uh, how rapid the development is so we learned that it's really important to here integrate the social component into the conservation of the ecosystems so here we develop a uh, a new uh, concept, I don't know with development, but we love the community science. Why? Because uh, citizen science is really, really important. But here, working with the community to noticing, to uh, bonding and like to collaborate academia with local communities, we have to, to keep the stakeholders together to an important conservation program. Here we can see it's Don Jose again. This was a really nice exercise. Uh, we start like planning with them how they see their future in next year, five years. This was last year, so you can see here Cayo Alcatraz 2020. So what was happening? What was in their minds? So for first of all, to change the way they uh, the fisheries worked. There's a lot of illegal fishing going on, so it's a really worry about the area. But here they want to start uh, their own lobster, um, lobster sustainable fishing, uh, another type of tourism, and especially to keep the bonding between academia and community. And a really nice story over here it was he's Nico, he's a member of the community. And he was talking to us. He was telling me that he doesn't speak Spanish very well. So, so he started talking in Maya and he's well, how important is for him to keep the rhythms and especially to have the opportunity to participate in this conservation journey. So it doesn't matter. Uh, if you are above the water or if you are underwater, we notice it in Coral Hero that with the, without the community, there is no conservation. So this is the work we've been doing till now in Coral Hero. And I thank you very much to all of you for listening. And if you have any questions, I'm here. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Christina. Really, really great. So everyone, if you'd like to ask any questions or anything like that, you can click the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen and um, type in your questions and we'll read them out to Christina and uh, get some answers for you. So let's see what we got. Um, first question coming in. Sue says, amazing projects. How effective do you think the efforts are? And are the corals in the area on their way to, a rec to recovery? Uh, we hope in the recovery. The white syndrome is not so bad right now, but we have another problem that is bleaching. When the water level, the water heats up, it's an important problem. So we have a lot of factors that we have to, to stop, um, like a lot of tourism, stuff like that. But coral recovery will take time. We're in the time like we need to stop right now the problems and the coral growth is really small. Some corals growth is like one centimeter to 10 centimeters per year. So the recovery we will see in short time. But yes, I think there's a lot of efforts and we can see a little bit of progress. Awesome. Little by little, it's all that matters. You gotta make some difference. Yeah. Uh, so Caesar asks, is there a program that includes the care of Mexican coasts and Caribbean Ocean in Mexico? Because in 2000, there was one called uh, Programa de Ordamiento Ecologico Marino, and there was mm -hmm. one for each marine region in Mexico. Yeah, there's a lot of programs and there is a natural protect areas. Each protect area has a, have their own management plans. So in Cozumel, there is one, there is a big one in all the Caribbean reserve. So yeah, there is a lot of efforts. We can see like here in the link, there is a Canam Cozumel. This is one, one important efforts. But unfortunately, sometimes they don't have enough funding. So we need to get together and to help to these things happen really. Yeah. I think for me, it's one of the incredible things about I mean, living in Mexico or well, living in many places and then ending up in Mexico is there's actually a lot of 
programs and projects in Mexico working on all sorts of different things. And I find that really beautiful about being here and living here is that there's just, there's so much, whether it be, you know, in like the uh, Atlas de Mars with Octavio Alberto and these guys and Mars Mexicanos working all over Mexico in different projects and everything. And then smaller, like more localized projects, like say with Leos Cacuna or like what you guys are doing over there and these kind of things are just, it's really beautiful to see how many people are really trying to make a difference in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Um, so Teresa asks, are the authorities involved at all? And how do we get, uh, how do we get more support from them? Yeah, the authorities are invo involved. Uh, the CONAM here, the link, it's the government that it's in charge of the natural protect area. Uh, municipality, sometimes it's, it's difficult, but it's not impossible. Uh, the most important thing uh, when you want to ask, like, join or help, is not to bring them problems because they know what their problems are. Probably, like, I need, I have, like, this action, I need this with specific actions. They sometimes give support. They're sometimes yes, sometimes no. It could be most, but more, but we were trying to get them into the boat. Awesome. Uh, it's really, really good. Yeah, it, it's the same like us with saving Los Cabos here in Cabo. It's, um, you know, if you go at them with just bringing problems and complaining and whining without solutions or anything, you're never going to really get anywhere. You have to be able to, you know, support their efforts and see how they, you can work together and mutually, mm -hmm. you know, be beneficial for the, the natural area. Yeah. Um, awesome. So Pauline asks, do you do any initiatives for replacing or planting new corals similar to what's being done in the Florida Keys or are those, and are those, do you know if those programs are effective? Uh, there's a program in Cozumel. It's Cozumel Coral Reef Restoration Program. It is led by Dr. Germán Méndez. He's been doing it for a few years now and he's like really giving his heart in this project. If you want, I can give you the link. There's projects, but unfortunately restoration, it involves like restoration, the quality of the water, it's restoration of the whole ecosystem. So yes, there's a little action, restoring coral uh, actions, but yeah, the restore part, it's bigger than just like put the coral in just a new place. It involves a lot of things. Yeah, it's a, I think that's it's incredible. We're actually here in Cabo, Dive Ninjas has been working with Sea Shepherd to, and also with the guys from Cozumel, they're actually helping design the program um, to build a coral restoration project in Cabo San Lucas in the Marine Park here. And mm -hmm. it's uh, it's almost a bit, I don't wanna say shocking, but it's, it's surprising how much work has to actually go into setting up these farms and like being able to, to do it and everything. I think it's, you know, it's a great initiative, it's incredible. Um, but I think the other side of it too is is slowing down, like stopping the the damage being done before and all that kind of stuff instead of trying to fix it after. I think it's uh, we need both parts to be you know working together to you know fix what's already destroyed, but also stop more damage being done and all that. Like the stuff that you guys are doing and everything like that is massive. You know what I mean? It's it's a great thing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So Christine says you're an inspiration for me on how driven you are for your passion of the coral. I live in the U.S. by the Atlantic Ocean in Delaware. How could I go about starting uh, coral conservation projects in my area? Uh, it depends because we can all help. I'm an industrial designer and I'm doing my part here. It depends what you want to do. I think it's really important what you like to do. And an uh, integral project, a conservation project needs a lot of things. If you are a lawyer, if you are a publicist, if you are whatever the field, or expert to feel you, it's a perfect way to give your expertise. If you are a diver, of course, you can do more. It depends on your possibility and your passion, and you can do it. Awesome. It's just like come from your heart, and that's it. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, uh, Teresa asks, uh, also, how can we get, to get, get together with USA and Mexico Marine Research Teams? Oh, that's a difficult one. I I never had contact with a um, marine specialist like your reserves over there. I would love to. If anyone have a contact, I really would love to. But I think here people really want to learn. All my friends, all my buddies that we're diving together, we want to learn more and more. And our opportunities sometimes are just to be online or to get the information wherever we can. So if we can make this happen to share some experiences, like we want, of course, we want to go there. If you want to come here, 
that can be of course arranged but yeah if you have the contact please <laughs> please let me know <laughs> awesome um so jessica asks how can we help your group uh she says i'm an advocate and conservationist as a profession i'm happy to volunteer virtually via remote support or to support your great work um what can others do to get involved with your project and help out the project uh well it depends if you want like just to share information and to inform your local community that's great if you want to come uh, here and start like scientific diving or something like that, of course we can connect. Uh, there is a lot of people working in that, like Dr. German. He's giving a two days or four days course about coral restoration, so it's really nice. Or if anyone really can volunteer or help or something, please here is our page and our social media. You can tell us your your what you want to do, and of course we can arrange something. Awesome. Tanya says, thank you for your presentation. What are the challenges Coral Hero faces when working together with the academia, the community or government institutions? I think a really big issue in beginning this is was like academia and community. We don't have this bridge. It's really difficult. Like sometimes academic people, the knowledge it uh, it was in it's in papers it's in some places that the community doesn't have the the access to them so in coral hero we we understand a little bit of this project and this opportunity to link to be that bridge to connect the all the scientific data that we know it's important and to connect it to the real action that the community is doing so i think that was something that it's difficult and will be difficult but it's a really nice work to do no no great work amazing um real quick so barbara says hi christine i'm also in delaware too um <laughs> if you guys would like us to link you up you can either message each other in the chat or feel free to send us an email and we can share your emails between the two of you if you like perfect making new friendships <laughs> that's great awesome Never been to that, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, Edgardo says, great presentation and initiative. No, no question, just uh, saying that you did a great presentation and likes your initiative. Um, Tanya asks, how do you feel your preparation and perspective through your industrial design degree inspired or prepared you to do the work you do now? Wow, that's a good question. I think... I was really not angry with my profession, but I was like, what to produce more, to produce more. And that's industrial design. And I don't take the part to develop products, but just the, the way they think. Sometimes the way the, um, the normal projects are structured, or the way they're taking, it's like a same line. I think as an industrial designer, I can integrate more. I can be a little bit out of the box and in the designing process some always you have to think like circular like if you are developed something you want to use it and you don't like throw it away you need to think about how you reuse this so create a circular proposals so i think this is the way i can use it in in coral hero like it's not about tourism to go to the ocean to dive and that's it we want to give it back to the ocean to the resources so we can circular the way we we think and we develop projects. No, it's incredible. It's the same. My, my background is in graphic design and advertising is where I, I started and everything. And, and I find that it, it helps a lot because you see things in a, a different light than most people will, um, especially say people that are more in like mechanical sides or scientific sides. They see this more straightforward kind of step by step by step. And we're more looking at not just what's ahead, but what's here, what's over here, and how can this all come together and be a more holistic approach to trying to work on things. That's true. That it's um, very, very uh, great. You know, it definitely is benefits. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And I love the Coral Hero logo. It's super great. I was actually going to say, I forgot to mention yeah. Coral. I mean, once you guys start with the pushing out the rash guards, we'd love to have them in the Dive Ninja shop in Cabo. That would be amazing. Oh. Definitely love to sell them for you guys. We will send you some, promise. Awesome, looking forward to having them in the shop. 
Perfect. Um, so Ernesto asked, I'm going to translate it because it's in Spanish, but he says, excellent presentation, Christina. Um, they are divers that live in Merida in the Yucatan, and they're wondering how they could help your, their, your, proje uh, your project. They're underwater photographers, and they really want to help to save and protect the reefs in Mexico. Awesome. Okay. Uh, we're working with uh, groups. We call him here Cooperativas. I don't know the specific names, but are the different groups in the community in Quintana Roo. They're like working together and we start working with uh, some others here in Quintana Roo. So I don't see any problem if you give us like the name where, where there we, we can see the, um, of course, they're the ecosystem if they want to do something there or if you want to come here there's always needed help especially divers photographers yeah we want to i think a really important thing is what we don't know we it's difficult for us to involve and conserve so maybe so uh, social media photograph videos are really important thing to do to share this message so yes of course all the help we need awesome no, <laughs> great in one second i'm actually gonna I'm going to just pause for a second. Christina, well, two things. One, there's the Dive Ninjas is doing a, a coral conservation course this weekend. Some people had asked about it. So I'm just going to post the link in the chat in case anyone wants to check it out. And then Christine had sent Barbara the email information, but she sent it to us and not to uh, her. So let me see if I can find Barbara and then oh, I can't find it. All right, let me try to figure that out in a second. Um, cool. So <clears throat> Teresa says, um, if we could encourage people in the presentation, if you have contacts or emails that you could send to Christina, especially the ones that could help because they say are involved with aquariums or ocean organizations, biologists, activists, et cetera, we need mm -hmm. to start being more connected. Um, mm -hmm. I totally agree, Teresa. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. Um, Edgardo asks, uh, are there any hashtags that you use in case they want to provide images or information on social media of the corals? We are always use like hashtag be a coral hero. That's uh, our main hashtag. And I don't remember right now, but I can let you know later, of course. Awesome. Perfect. And last one from Diana. She says, this was such an amazing presentation and project. It gives me hope for the future of the corals in our ocean. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. If there anyone else have any other questions before we wrap up? If not, while we're typing some questions. So tomorrow we're back again with some more uh, work on corals. Actually, in about an hour, we're going to be back on again to do the, uh, Christina's going to be giving another presentation in Spanish again um, mm -hmm. for our Spanish listeners. So you can come back and check that out. It's going to be hosted by uh, Ligia, who's one of the Team Ninja staff here. Um, and then tomorrow we're back again with Ellen, another member of Team Ninja, who's going to do a little intro to coral reefs, just a little bit about their biology and the complex ecosystems and these kind of things. It's a very great talk for kids, um, getting them involved and looking at coral and all that, but also great for all ages and everything too. Um, so cool, yeah, we just got another question pop in. So let me read that over. It says, um, from Maria. Uh, hi, I'm a senior veterinary, veterinary student. I love to work on ocean wildlife and conservation. I've done some research on marine mammals, microbiology, and I'm looking forward to work with manta rays and coral reefs. How could I collaborate in uh, this coral project as a veterinarian? Wow. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, one of the biggest inspiration, Dr. Genma, he's a veterinarian, so he's doing coral conservation and restoration. So you're going for the a good, go, a good way. And please write us down. We always want to learn more about scientific information, some uh, environments on some species. So please, please give uh, our contact and we can talk more about it. Awesome. That would be great. Sounds great. Send them over an email. And it's funny to say that there's actually, Maria, like a lot of some of the bigger, bigger conservationists I know and researchers and everything actually come from a veterinarian background. I, I see that a lot. Um, some of the people that actually like that work with us on projects with Macaway and these other organizations, they actually all they came from veterinarian backgrounds and they moved into working in the ocean or um, working with marine animal rescue, like marine mammal rescue or birds or sea lions and all these kind of things. It's really beautiful, really awesome. Super cool. All right, perfect. Well, I think that's all the questions we've got for today. So right. thank you everybody for tuning in. I hope everybody's well out there. Thank you to you, Christina. Thanks for stopping by. 
Thank you, Yay. Thank you very much for the opportunity to share this. Oh, awesome. Season. And we'll see you a little bit for the Spanish talk in a little while. And uh, thanks for everyone tuning in. Make sure to check back in a little bit if you want to check out the Spanish talk. Um, and if also tomorrow uh, at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, um, we're back with Ellen Myers doing an introduction to coral reefs. And check out the social media, uh, Dive Ninjas on Facebook and Instagram to check out the new schedule um, that was just released this morning with the next two weeks of talks. And make sure to follow Coral Hero on uh, Instagram and Facebook. Thank you so much, Christina. Have a wonderful Thank day. You. We look forward to seeing you, See you soon. In a bit. Thank See you. you. Thank you. Bye.